as uh, the Lafayette Leopards, for the first time since 2013, will be your Patriot League champions. It will be a co-championship, but so what? They won championships in 88, 92, 94, 04, 05, 06, and 2013. And what a second half. It was all about the second half. It was all about the local steadiness and continuity through the game. And it was about that offensive line and Jamar Curtis taking control. And there's nothing better than watching the Lafayette community, you know, basically storm the field with victory in their veins here in Bethlehem. Megan's going to try to chat with the uh, MVP. And we'll try to get an interview also with the player of the game before uh, we call it a day. And again, remember tomorrow at 1230 is the FCS championship show, which will uh, tell everybody where the 24 teams will be playing next Saturday. And uh, you can watch that and then make sure you stay tuned on ESPN Plus and watch our Lafayette men's basketball game against the Wilkes. We've had seasons here. This is special. This is special. This is special. This is it just has a different feel to it. I mean, we've won championships. We've been in this booth on this field. Mm. It, it, this is a special, special changing of the guard here. And uh, wow, what a job the staff has done. What a job these players have done and the seniors on this team taking control. I don't even think John Troxel could have envisioned. I know he envisioned because we talked before the season started. Mm -hmm. He envisioned a lot of improvement. He envisioned a better record. I don't think even he could have envisioned uh, what this team was able to accomplish and to come away with a championship trophy. Uh, nothing better than that. And to realize that they could lose as little as three players <laughs> from this team. Absolutely. A lot of these kids can come back. And, and the big key was the way they flipped four games. They flipped the Georgetown mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. They flipped the Fordham game. They flipped the Holy Cross game. Um, they, they've just been able to, f and Princeton, those are the four games they flipped. They won them all. We have a chance now to take a look at some of the highlights of today's game, and there are plenty of them if you're a Lafayette fan. Yeah, and, and, and Lafayette, again, had a little trouble getting the ground game going, but they did get a chance here on fourth down. Beautiful call there by DJ Demuzio, and a nice catch by Gilbert. Gets Lafayette on the on the board early after 67 yards throwing by Dean DeNoble on that first drive. Lee answered, give them a lot of credit. I thought DiPietro played great. I thought Pierre, uh, um, the quarterback right there, Perry, when you gave him an opportunity, he's going to hit that little uh, dig route to the outside. And then again, Lafayette's going to tie the football game here at 14 to 14. But again, Lehigh really answered the call. And he answered the call the entire first half. And Connor Kennedy puts him on top 21 to 14. And if you're Lafayette, you're going into the locker room saying, listen, we got to show up here in the second half and do what we do. Well, that's what Lafayette did. And they put more pressure on Perry as he's going to roll to his right here. Lafayette, great coverage. I thought was the play of the game. Sekou White, he comes up with the interception right when Lafayette really could have given up another score. Lafayette goes right down the field. Dallas Holmes scores the game tying touchdown at 21 all. And then you thought Lafayette, okay, let's start to lean on him a little bit. Let's start to do what we do. This was a huge play. Gary had pointed it out. The dump off on third down and five to get Jamar Curtis going. It wasn't a run but it was a catch and run. And then it was all Jamar Curtis from that point on. He got the ball into the end zone. The 28-21 the, uh, to 21 lead here puts Lafayette up seven. And then you kind of just got the feeling that Lafayette's offensive line started to lean on the defense. Big plays down the field. Stewart, they're going to answer with another touchdown here. The Caracia over the top gets the separation. That created the two-score lead. Lafayette up right there at 35-21, uh, to 21, the 14-point lead. And then right here, this play, this is what you're waiting for, another turnover, all created there, I believe, by Kente Edwards, picked up by Griffin Rooney. What a play he has made. Griffin Rooney on the ball, great special teams player. And then it was all Jamar Curtis from that point on. He put it in his pocket, and he said, you guys, hey, get a body on a body, and I will do the rest. And he was on the mark. Look at him pop it right inside here. Again, body on a body, Basha, Barr, Olmstead. Just a fantastic job between the tackles and Lafayette at that point just put the football game away. The MVP, Dean DeNoble, 19 for 27, 245 yards, and three touchdowns with John Leone. Thanks. The uh, MVP, Dean, take us through maybe what was said at halftime. It was a completely different team that came out after those first uh, 30 minutes. 
the end of the day, I mean, we knew. Or try. Marvelous. We cut it. We cut it out, so uh, we'll get back there, hopefully. Again, difficult uh, place to do the wireless here at Goodman Stadium. Hopefully we can get back and uh, chat with Dean a little bit longer as he is the MVP. Marco Olivas, also appropriate. What a, what a career here at Lafayette. And to come back for this particular season for one reason only, and it's to lift that trophy. <laughs> it really was. He's put his heart and soul and his blood and his sweat and his tears, and it, it goes back to the foundation laid by guys like uh, Malik Ham. Um, they laid the foundation here, and uh, Marco picked it up. He picked up the mantle. He walked it out in front of everybody and said, hey, get on my back, and I'm going to take you there with my words and my play. And what a great job by Marco Olivas in that defense. So congratulations to them, uh, the entire defense shutting out Lehigh in the second half. Uh, uh, certainly... A great performance, and uh, the Lafayette fans have now flooded Goodman Stadium. The Lehigh fans have turned around and headed home. And, uh, is that a cigar? There's a victory cigar being uh, not smoked, of course, but uh, certainly indicative of, uh, of the meaning of what a victory cigar is. That's Keller Gammons down there on the field. Let's see if we can get a shot of the uh, trophy being, being presented. But... Uh, You'd like to see the Patriot League trophy here as well, but it was kind of up for grabs there till the end, and Lafayette put a cap on it. Again, Holy Cross uh, won their football game today, so they too finished 5-1, and one, but Lafayette with that big win over Holy Cross uh, earlier in the season, a must win to put them in this position, and they won that ball game 38-35. And does this maybe raise Lafayette a little higher in the uh, – in the national standings, they came in 22 and 24. Uh, won the coaches poll number 22, the FCS stats poll number 24. Uh, they were as high at one time as 18 and 16. 16, 16 and 18. Yeah, they, I mean, they were right there. And uh, obviously the Colgate loss dropped them a little bit. But imagine if they didn't have the Colgate loss. <laughs> yeah. They could be up and, and getting a bye. You never know. But, and that uh, ball game, kind of like this one, they got up 17 nothing to Lafayette only to see Colgate come yep. back. Uh, they substituted quarterbacks, and a kid named Sterling just did a, a Sterling job in that book game. Yeah. I, I, and again, if you look at Lehigh, obviously, Coach Cahill did a good job holding this team together, had a good week of practice. They came out and put a hefty first half together. They just couldn't, couldn't sustain it. Megan is with John Troxell. Gary. Coach, when you were down at the half, you told me your team just needed to settle down a bit. How did they play with more confidence in the second? You know, turnovers were a big part of it. You know, you get short fields. You know, once we scored, you know, we just said, hey, we've got to go out, we got to stop them, and then we got to score. And, and he, uh, you know, hey, listen, I mean, I'm proud of these guys. I mean, they battled all year. I mean, there was, there was no quitting them. You know, just yeah, halftime was just about staying calm, relaxing, making sure that we could come out, stay poised, you know, so not panic, you know, and there was no panic in the guys. You know, they were ready to fight. Coach, you told me with everything that this game could mean today, it would be magic yes. if you won. How is today magical? Patriot League champions. Oh, it's magical. There's no doubt about it. The way we, the way we won games this year, uh, you know, a lot of things got to go right for you to end up with 9-2. Two and, you know, I mean, 700 wins in program history, so I'm happy for that. You know, and uh, you know, we we you know we did something that was is, is not done every year. So you know, and that comes with a lot of people. I mean, you talk about a village of people doing it. You know, and I, I just want to I want to say this to our alums, right? I mean, this place is changing. It's changing fast, and we're here. We're not going anywhere. We have great leadership from our president, our AD. You know, but we need your help. I mean, we we need people to be committed to this program, to the college. You know, and it's not just about our players. It's you know, it's about all our students having a great experience. You know, our president talks about the power of and. We, Great at engineering and liberal arts, and that's what she says. And I'm proud to be a part of this uh, university and college. Congratulations. Enjoy this one with your team. Appreciate it. Thank you. Gary. Thank you, Megan. We, uh, we believe that the Patriot League trophy is in the building. I don't know whether it is or not. Um, there it is. It. There, there it is. is. There yeah. it is. We've got to look at it. There it is. Wait, it's been a long time. <laughs> 
10 years. 10 years. <laughs> 10 years it has. 10 years. And to think the last two have been right here at Goodman Stadium. And, and the Mike. next two two games will be at home, just to make a point of that, because we're going to have to obviously try to get the 25-26 game, the 200th right. anniversary of the college. So both games next year and the year after that will be on College Hill. Yeah, not uh, not next year, Mike. Not next year. Next okay, year will be sorry. back here. Next year will be here, so we can have the two. My bad. Yep. So. And then, uh, in fact, the, the reason is, of course, they're going to try to celebrate when Lafayette College as a college Correct. came into existence. Marco down there. Look at they're so excited. And they got the Patriot League. There it is, Gare. Ah, it's official now. They will raise the trophy. The Lafayette Leopards are headed to the FCS playoffs. It's hard to earn one of those babies. It really is. All coaches talk about how hard it's hard to win games, mm -hmm. let alone to win a championship, and that's in the hands of Marco Olivas and his fellow Leopards today. So they will be happy to display that at Burger Field House in the trophy case. And they'll take, have it for a year. I want to see him take the picture and they all kind of lay down around it and they get that Patriot League. They got that little trophy there. And, and win number 700 wow, for that, Lafayette. That's, that kind of goes unnoticed a little bit, but 700 wins. There's Coach raising the trophy, Coach Trox. They came in ranked 52nd in President the Hurd. country in college football victories. And dare I say that uh, Lehigh has 707. So we've got to catch that. We're on our way to do just that. Marco. <laughs> This it, is for He's not a more emotional guy in his football it's team. It's for the whole community. It's for, look at all the, the students. It's all for them. And he's still talking. <laughs> he's still, still He gives preaching. great, it's a shame we can't, and we, for some of them we don't want to hear them. No. But uh, he gives great speeches after wins and after losses. Uh, he was not happy after uh, they lost their ball game to Colgate. And uh, he gave one of those rousing speeches that, you know, Mike, we talked to the captains just this past week, and uh, they talked a little bit about that speech and how it sunk into the entire team. Yeah, it meant a lot. It meant a lot to all of them, and you could see the, the kind of the ripple effect mm -hmm. of, his, of his attitude. Uh, he's, he's a special kid, and we're so blessed to have him. And it'll be interesting to see uh, Lehigh's development now with a new one-year head yep. coach. Uh, Coach Cahill, uh, he, uh, you know, Coach Troxel's kind of set a bar here with some expectations of, you know, letting a team grow and uh, getting better and better. Yeah, it's not about record right now for Lehigh. It, it's about guys continuing to grow, like you said. And they have to find, you know, the teams that have been so good for Lehigh have had that dominant quarterback. The guy that can throw the football, spread it around, and they add in the running game. Um, but uh, it's, it's a special day for Lafayette and uh, just happens to be here as you see Marco continue going. A little shout out to his mom, Sylvia. She always watches us and we say congratulations to you too, Sylvia. We are, we're trying to uh, get some conversation here with Dean DeNoble. We're trying to get some conversation with Marco Olivas. Uh, although Marco uh, may not ever stop talking. He's still, uh, he, he's still, cheering on his football team and getting them ready I'm sure for for next week he wants to get them ready for FCS playoffs and again ESPNU by the way will have the selection show tomorrow at 1230 ESPNU and then it's not too hard to get the ESPN plus to watch the basketball team as uh, we'll have their first home game. And so many young players on this Lafayette team, so many guys who because of, I mean, COVID has set up such a unique situation in allowing young men to Mike to play so much longer than they would have ever played before. You know, I, I said that to Marco, I said, and, and Billy Schaefer at the senior dinner on Thursday, I said, he's, you know, 22 years old. He's got a body like he's 50 probably. 
And uh, you know, Billy's a guy that's going to get a look at the next level. I would think Marco as well when he gets that knee moving. But they got another game to play. You know, it's been a long time mm -hmm. since we've played a playoff game. And uh, Lafayette's been 10 years. They got a chance to show that they belong. Just like Holy Cross did. Holy Cross went, beat Sacred Heart, got to the next round. They gave since they gave South Dakota State, mm -hmm. the best team in the mm -hmm. country, the best game of the year. The team that played them, I think, I'm not sure who played them in the playoff, the final. But the only team that played them really tough was wire that? to wire yeah. was Holy Cross from the Patriot League. And now Lafayette has a chance to do the same. And you know, the, the, uh, the bracketing, the people that do the voting, for where you sit in the top 24, you know, they have been very reluctant to take Holy Cross out of that of that ranking. As, uh, you know, Holy Cross with four losses, but people still uh, think that, that they are they are very, very uh, pleased with the way the Holy Cross team has played this year. And, and that's good for the Patriot League. It shows more respect. I think we're going to go down to Megan in just a minute. But as you said, yeah, that shows more respect for the Patriot League as well. And, uh, and let's thank Mother Nature as well. We had a, a beautiful day. The last couple of days have been nice. It's, it's almost too nice here today. The sun, <laughs> uh, the sun here beats on the uh, press box. I mean, mercilessly, to be honest. As uh, and it also is on the scoreboard. Scoreboard now, quite now the game's over. The scoreboard's quite visible. Yeah, it is <laughs> quite visible. And, uh, Normally, Lehigh normally turns the scoreboard off when they lose. Yes. <laughs> they turned yeah. off pretty quick. Yeah, 49-21 uh, should not be staying up there very long. Still see the Lafayette players gathering right there at midfield. And... All right, we will uh, get down to Megan in just a bit. They want to take a team picture. Yeah, they're all and some of the guys are gathering to get in that picture. We don't miss... Uh, So there they are. You get a look at the team uh, facing the photographer. Got the Patriot League trophy in there as well. A lot of things go on and happen when you win a championship. <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, this is a, photo a photograph that certainly uh, every player will want to copy. So we can hang in his office someday. Lafayette grads tend to get in there, Elijah. end up in offices. I just Stewart, Stewart get, yeah. hey, get, Conyers, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I remember 2013 and yep. uh, going down on the field. Uh, special moment. A very happy Frank Tavani, his football team. Yeah, guys like Mark Ross and yep. Drew Reed. There were, some, there were some good players on that team. James Kasha made the big in, uh, pick up, fumble mm -hmm. pick up for the mm -hmm. touchdown. They got him to the 50. And, uh, how impressive was the offense? And Gary, you and I, oh. we begged for offense for years, yes. right? And we just couldn't an get out of line. our own way. Was our, uh, we couldn't get an offensive but line. Such a difference. We're going to throw it to Megan. Here she goes. Thanks, Gary. Marco, you told me earlier this week you came back because you felt like you had unfinished business and you wanted to win a Patriot League title. You're a champion today. Yeah, it just feels great, you know, like like you said, unfinished business. I feel like I couldn't I couldn't leave Lafayette like that. I couldn't leave the Patriot League. And just the amount of work we put in, I, I know it's not really related to what you said, but I just want to make sure it's notes. We, we worked for this. This is not a fluke. We, we worked our tails off everything, weight room, film study, spring ball, all that. This was earned. We earned this every single day. And I'm just so grateful for my guys for buying in. So grateful for that. And I'm just, I, I just, it feels good to finally, you know, my fifth year, I'm done with eligibility. I can go out a champion, can go out on top. I'm so blessed, so grateful to be a part of this team. You told me Lafayette football isn't a fluke. What is the new standard that is set for Lafayette? The new standard is just holding each other accountable and losing is unacceptable now. You know, people can talk about, oh, one season ago, you know, we were losing a lot more than we were now, so we can be okay. But no, complacency kills. So losing no matter what. Yeah, we're 9-2 and two now. Those two losses sucked. E after each of those losses, a new, the standard was even raised even higher. Standard was even raised higher. We needed to be better. And so that, that's just what I got to say about that. How special 
is this team that you played with all season long? Oh my gosh, I told the guys in the locker room that this team is special. These guys are my brothers for life. I told them I'd rather lose with these guys than win with anybody else in the country. Win with anybody else in the country, I'd rather lose with these guys because these are my brothers. I know they're willing to put it on the line for me. I know they're willing to put their bodies, sacrifice everything for me for this work, for this idea because it's not about the individual. You know, it's not about me. It's not about the, the, the quarterback. It's not about that. It's about Lafayette football and everybody bought in and had that same idea that we want this team to be up here exceptional. Doesn't matter what me, doesn't matter if I make the tackle, doesn't matter who scores the touchdown, as long as this team is exceptional, everybody's happy and everybody's bought in with that idea and I'm just so glad the guys are about it. To have a little bit of individual pride though, Marco, for you personally, your last Lafayette Lehigh game, you come away Patriot League champions, where does this win rank for you personally? Oh, this is the best win of my career. I, I went into this game thinking it's, this is the most important game of my career all out and to finally get that win after, to finally hold up that trophy and see all our hard work paid off, this is a core memory set for me. I'm never going to forget this day for the rest of my life. And again, I'm just so grateful for everybody. I'm so grateful for my guys because it, it, was, it was everybody. Everybody had a role. Everybody had a part. Scout team guys, guys that didn't really play on the field, they're in practice helping our guys, helping the ones on defense and offense get prepared for the week, working their tails off, giving us great looks. And just everybody, even guys on the energy, guys with energy on the sideline, hyping guys up, you know. They didn't touch the field once, but they're... They're, they're bringing everybody along. They're, they're rooting your team. You're rooting for your team. And those, everybody had a role. Everybody had a part. And I'm just so grateful that everybody bought in. Marco, congratulations. Thank you so much, Megan. John now has Jamar Curtis alongside him. Yeah, maybe the most difficult decision anybody had all day was deciding who the MVP would be. Now, it did go to the quarterback, uh, Dean DeNoble, but uh, I'm sure a close second, third, fourth. I mean, who knows? There were so many. Uh, Jamar, what a terrific game. Uh, you know, tell, us, tell us about how you do it. I mean, look, I don't post up many people in basketball. <laughs> I could post you up. How, nah, do, you get, how nah. do you get through that line? I mean, I mean I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, I put in the work for this, so I work this on. Tell us a little bit about what went on at halftime because <laughs> things, <laughs> things, are, things were a little... Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a lot of fun chaos. In the country. There you go. I, in okay. The so, all right. Well, let's get him while we got him. The MVP. Yeah, MVP. MVP. But Jamar, talk about what went on at halftime and, and what the, what the shift was in the mentality and the performance of this team. Um, we've been ourselves in the first half. Um, the mess would just stick together. I mean, we knew they gave us all they had in the first half. Uh, we came in the second half. We didn't play our best ball, but the second half we came out and we came ready. Well, I don't know. You heard Marco just a few minutes ago talk about the history and the impact that his this game has, not just for today and, and, and the next week or two, but for the rest of your life. This is a big deal. You said, you could tell by the crowd today. So congratulations to you, Jamar. Hopefully one of three more or two more to go for you. Let's turn to Dean. And, you know, Dean, uh, again, uh, the, 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 uh, the changeover, I think I heard Mike Joseph talk about uh, withstanding that emotional surge that Lehigh would have coming into the stadium and uh, you guys took the punch and recovered. Yeah, I mean, we knew they were, they were more of a first half team, but no matter what, no, none, none of us did it for ourselves. We all did it for each other. We love each other. That That's what made our season. We're a brotherhood and we all stick together no matter what. We could be down at half, we could be, we could be losing by 100. No matter what, we were going to fight and we were going to finish that game. So That was really the M.O. of this team all year long. It didn't matter. Every time you stubbed your toe, you found a way to come back. Uh, talk about what a leader like Marco and Billy Schaefer and those guys, they've passed the torch on to you guys now. This is a young team, but you're losing some very key senior leadership. Yeah, we 100% we are. Those guys are unbelievable. It's going to be it's gonna be so hard for anyone on this team to step into those shoes. And Well, at the end of the day, we, we have guys that are going to find the role and it's, it just moves on. They, they've taught us so much. They, they've helped us so much. So that's all we could ask for. Well, what you guys have done is really electrified the entire Lafayette community, students, faculty, alumni all over the country. It's been a great afternoon. We have these two guys to thank for it and a whole bunch of uh, Lafayette Lefford football players. It's been a great one. Gary Michael, back to you guys. Thank you, John. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Phil. I don't think there's any more to be said. I think those guys down on the field certainly said it, Mike. Yeah, they absolutely did. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful day, as John Troxel would tell you. It's a wonderful day to be a leopard. Thanks, man. We Thank did you. it again. Let's look forward to, uh, to next season or next Saturday, uh, depending on exactly what is determined. 
about next Saturday's game. We wish the Leopards well. Thanks to everybody on the Lafayette Sports Network, ESPN Plus, and certainly the Astound television team doing a terrific job all year long. That's it. Lafayette wins this one as they win their 700th game as a program. They are the Patriot League champions. For all of us, I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye, everybody.